Hi, I'm Cam Franklin here, a retired Coast Guard officer and SAM's accredited marine surveyor with over 40 years of experience in the maritime and diving industry. I've amassed literally thousands of photos of all the bad things I've found on boats during my career as a marine surveyor. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorites. We're going to take a look at each picture. We're going to discuss why they're evil, evil, and we're going to discuss what you need to do to correct them. So hop in, buckle up, keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times as we take a carnival-like ride tour through the cavalcade of owner-induced perversions that I like to call Captain Frank's Sea Chest of Horror. Sea Chest of Horror. So what we have here is a uh, vacuum tank for a vacuum flush type uh, marine toilet. And this is the vacuum tank here. And, you know, it looks okay. It, you know, the guys did a pretty good job. He's got it nicely secured. He's got it strapped down, bolted to the bulkhead. Well, the problem is, is uh, this isn't a bulkhead. This is the hull of the vessel. And he didn't bolt it. He put uh, four inch long screws in it. So if you look on the hull uh, outside of this area, which I did, of course, when we did the hull out, there's like three or four inches of screw uh, protruding from the side of the hull. So this guy just, <laughs> he just screwed this thing in right through the hull. So of course, this is not conducive to, uh, you know, keeping your hull in good condition or preventing water intrusion uh, through the hull. So. This is what you got. You got to, when you drill holes and drill screw, you know, put screws in, you got to make sure you know what's on the opposite side. Uh, if it's not the external or exterior of the hull, it could be, you know, pipes, hoses, or anything else. So what we're looking at here is a life raft. This is a life raft that's in a well uh, of a larger catamaran. And the purpose of this well, of course, is to keep the life raft uh, out of harm's way, keep it secured, and also in a place where it can be easily deployed. Now, life rafts will typically have what's called a, a hydrostatic release mechanism. Uh, and what that is, is if the vessel was to sink when it gets to a certain depth, typically 15 feet or so, the hydrostatic release mechanism would then cut the securing straps or whatever's holding the life raft in place and allow it to float free. The problem with this installation is that the owner has lashed the life raft in place with sail ties, which are just links of uh, webbing that are used to secure a sail to a boom. So what, uh, what you basically have here is that the life raft is completely tied. It has no hydrostatic release mechanism, nothing that would allow the life raft to float free in the event that the vessel sinks. So what you need here is a mechanism, a rele automatic release mechanism uh, utilizing a hydrostatic release uh, as called for by the manufacturer. So what we're looking at here is something from a boat that I surveyed probably 20 years ago. And to this day, it never fails to, one, make me laugh, and two, wonder, you know, shaking my head, what are people thinking when they do something like this? So this is a through hull fitting of a sailboat, a racing sailboat below the waterline. And <laughs> it still cracks me up. I can't believe it. So, you know, when you a through hull, basically you have a fitting, you know, like a mushroom style fitting with a, with a tube on it. And you slap the through hull in the, the hole. And on the other side, there's a hollow nut that goes on the other side, the body of the through hull fitting. And when you tighten that nut, it compresses against the hull, so the outer flange or mushroom looking, you know, the, the flange of the through hull fits against the hull, and then the nut on the inside, you tighten it. That's what holds it in place. Well, in some circles or misunderstood circles, I guess, uh, you know, the racers, they think, well, you know, every little protruding uh, bit of uh, material, you know, from the hull, everything that protrudes slows the boat down and we got to have all the speed we can get, you know, uh, when we're doing our sailboat racing. So <laughs> what they did was they ground off the flange, the outside flange of the through hulls so that now, you know, you have this tube 
sticking through the hull. Yeah, the flange is gone, uh, so you don't have any protrusions to slow the boat down, but you've also got none that'll hold the through hull in place. This is another one of the through hulls, and you can see here that the, the, the tube, or the body of the through hull, is starting to pull inside into the hull because there's nothing holding it but the caulking that they use to stick this thing in place. The flange is gone, so now the through hole body of the through hole is gonna pull inside. And this is what it looks like when the through hole, the body of it anyway, pulls into the inside of the vessel. So now, if this happens with a through hole that's located below the water line, of course the boat's gonna sink. Uh, if this through hole, let's say that it's, you know, six, seven inches above the water line, well, if that's the case and the body of the through hole pulls in like this, you've got a hole that's located, you know, six inches above the water line. You have effectively reduced your freeboard from three or four feet, which is the distance from the water line to the rub rail. You've now effectively reduced it to uh, six inches, which is uh, where the hole is located above the water line. So boaters, you know, some of them can be just like any other, uh, you know, activity. Some of them can be a little rednecky, a little uh, MacGyverism kicks in when they need something and they can't find what they actually need. So what we're looking at here is a raw water intake for a engine. You've got the strainer, which is connected to the through hull, uh, that bronze strainer there. And then connecting the strainer to the engine, um, you need a piece of marine grade hose to go there, right? Suitable for use below the water line. Well, we couldn't find any here. And you know, that marine grade stuff, that's so expensive, it's blown out of proportion. Don't really need that. So what we did, we went down there to the auto zone or the Napa and we got us a radiator hose. It's the same diameter. We, you know, it ain't quite the same. It's a little big, but we can, uh, we can crimp it on down good with these hose clamps and it'll work just fine. Well, obviously this is not what you need to use. What you need to use here is a section of uh, marine grade hose suitable for use below the waterline. And this radiator hose is definitely not that type of hose. 